Welcome to video 11 on having fun with the Arduino. In video 10 we finalized the user interface with respect to printing the status of our day-night lighting module on the computer screen. We now exactly know where it is, started, stopped, day, night. And well, now we have a final challenge. We like to be able to enter a new cycle time via the keyboard. So that's exactly a data transfer the other way around. Let's see how we can accomplish this. This is the code that we had at the end of video 10. And if I open a serial monitor, then, well, you have probably noticed before that here at the very top of the monitor there is a data entry field where we can simply type something and then hit enter or press send and it will be sent to the Arduino. So what we need to do in the Arduino code is to add the code to read that serial data. And that's quite easy, there are functions available for us to use. But first uh, we are going to add a little text in the setup part. Uh, that text that says that we now have this uh, uh, function available, that the user can enter a number between 1 and 9 in the field above and then press enter. Yeah, we, we just want to show that on our user interface that this is something the user can do. Now that uh, we have that uh, text over there, now we are going to, in our loop, we are going to look if the user has typed something. And there is a function available for that called serial available. If serial available is larger than zero, which means something is available in the serial buffer, then we are simply going to read it. So this next statement says, yeah, if there is something, just read it. And we expect uh, the user to type a number between 1 and 9, which is going to be our cycle time. Well, uh, we use it directly for test purposes so that we, uh, we have a quick test in the seconds range. But of course, if you like uh, the numbers 1 until 9 to become minutes, then you simply can multiply here by 60, of course. Well, if something has changed, then we also like to print that out. So we simply tell the user the cycle time has now changed to, yeah, to the new number, so that everyone is knowing what happened. Let's upload this code and let's try it out. Yeah, upload started, yeah. And let me press the serial monitor right now. And over here we see our new text indeed. I can now type a cycle time between 1 and 9 and then press enter. Well, let's type 5, why not? And press enter. And well, it says, oh, well, uh, it's not 5, it's 53. Hey, wait a minute. How come? What is happening? Well, this is happening because in a computer characters, the numbers and all the, the letters that we have available uh, are represented by a byte and these bytes are coded according to the so-called ASCII code. And let's have a look at that code so that we understand what happened here. This is a table of the American Standard Code for Information Interchange. And as we can see, for some reason, they decided back then, when they uh, first generated this code, to not give the numbers uh, 0 through 9 uh, the code 0 through 9, uh, it, but they started for some reason with 48 uh, as a decimal number. So 0 is coded as 48 and 1 is coded as 49 and so on. Well, that brings us to a brilliant idea. Why not just subtract 48 from the number that we read? Well, yeah, let's just do that. 
All right, so let's subtract 48 of the uh, serial read. That uh, should be quite simple. Uh, if I don't forget the minus sign. Yeah, minus 48. Let's upload this and let's see what that brings us. And upload almost done, I hope. Yeah, uh, open the serial monitor. There we are. And let me now type number five again. Enter. Yes, this time the cycle time changed to five seconds. That's all, uh, well, perfectly well. Now, what happens if I type a character like, like an H? Uh, yeah, then we get, uh, uh, nothing goes wrong. We get just the uh, number uh, that is in the ASCII table that belongs to the H minus 48. So actually, you can, uh, if you have that table at hand, you can uh, input any number now between 0 and 255. <laughs> actually, it's quite nice. If you don't like this, yeah, then we could add an if statement that checks if the input really is larger than 0 and smaller than 10. And if it is outside of that range, we just ignore it. We could do that, but for the sake of simplicity, we are not going to. What happens uh, if I enter a double or a triple digit number? Let's say 180 seconds. Uh, oh, then it, uh, yeah, it reads them all. 180. And the final one that I typed, that's the one it is going to use, apparently. Okay. Well, not too bad. But suppose that I really like uh, not to have just numbers between 1 and 9 that I can type in, but I really like to type in 180 seconds. Can we do that too? Yes, we can. We are going to use another function for that. What we could do is read all those characters that came in. We just saw that the 1, the 8 and the 0, all three came in. So we could multiply the first one with 100 and the second one with 10 and the third one uh, multiply with nothing and add it all up and then we would get 180 seconds. Well, we first of course have to wait a while to decide nothing uh, more is being typed in. But that would be quite tedious to write that software ourselves and it is made easy for us. That function is available and that function is called not serial read, but serial parse integer, mind the capital I over there. And uh, that function does all this work for us. Uh, we don't have to subtract the 48 uh, anymore also, because that function takes care of everything. We also don't have to multiply by 60 again. Uh, <coughs> anymore, I mean, because if we type in 180 seconds, we will get 180 seconds. Let me upload this and see what happens. Yeah, upload almost done. Yeah, it's done. Uh, open the serial monitor. Let me now type a new value. I want three minutes, which is 180 seconds. I type enter. It waits a while, yeah, it is apparently waiting if more input is coming, but it did not. And there it is, it's 180 seconds. Let me now start our uh, lighting. Yeah, it uh, has started, night time, well, still some uh, seconds for randomness added. I have to make those random numbers a bit uh, larger, a bit bigger, of course, because no one will see the difference between 180 and 184, but that's a detail. Um, and now I'm going to uh, switch it off again. It is still, yeah, still running in the nighttime. It still has to do the daytime. And now I am going to enter another number, 55. And I hit enter and I don't see anything. Yeah, that is not nice, of course. I have a user interface. I type something, but nothing happens. I have to wait now first, that whole complete cycle, uh, until it is finished, before I will see my new entry. What is the reason behind this? Well, the reason is uh, to generate our timing, we use the delay statement. And the delay statement is uh, very quick and easy to use, but it has a major drawback. Uh, during that delay, the Arduino does not do anything. 
so that's the reason why we don't see our new cycle time. The loop is not running, the loop is just waiting until the delay is finished. That is not what we want, of course. So in, I, I think, in two videos from now we are going to change that. But let's first now switch to our hardware solution for changing the cycle time. We promised our tech company two solutions. The software solution is now finished, it's working fine, except for this uh, delay statement that we really have to get out. Uh, so now we are going to do in the next video our hardware solution, which is a rotating knob. And when we rotated the knob, the cycle time has got to change. And there we will have exactly this same issue. If I rotate the knob during the delay, I won't be able to see anything. So we have to really solve that anyhow. Let's first go to the hardware solution. And then in the video after that, we are going to get rid of this delay and change that into something better. Well, thank you for watching and see you back in the next video maybe. Bye bye.